Praise the Lord from more blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. Today is 2-15-2020 in the year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm currently in West Palm Beach, Florida in the studios in the main branch library off of Summit. And today we'll be speaking our Sabbath word um, concerning my earnest expectation. My earnest expectation and we'll be finding our text in Philippians chapter 1 and around the verse 20. If you ever want to get in contact with our ministry feel free to call us at 614-847-2057 or 614-723-9770 or by way of the internet at www.teamjesususa.com. Our ministry comes before you two times during the calendar week. Once on the Sabbath which is today um, and then again, during the midweek miracle, we do a midweek miracle sermon. Now, our Sabbath sermon is recorded for playback, but our midweek miracle sermon is shot live, and we record live from this location generally um, by way of Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and YouTube for playback. We do YouTube for playback generally in the event the live feed would crash and we would lose the audience. So we always record uh, still camera for playback. But our Sabbath word is generally recorded for playback instead of live in the event we have a studio audience or we happen to be at a church ministry. So we're just so excited about being in another year of ministry. Um, we count things in, in seasons. And this is uh, probably our sixth season online, fifth or sixth season online. And we're excited about the fact that God uses us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for your love, your grace, your mercy, your anointing, your power, your presence, everything you've done, everything you are doing, Father God. Just ask and pray in the name of Jesus that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. That you use my vocal cords, my presence, the things you will have me say to be mighty in scripture, to do the things that you have called me to do to call people that's in darkness that desire to come to light to come to light in the name of Jesus, to call those that may be sick in their body to be healed in the name of Jesus, Father God, that the power of the Holy Spirit and the words, Father God, would transform their lives from who they are to who you called and created them to be. I thank you for this platform that you've given me to share the gospel. I just pray you have your will and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, we'll be speaking on the subject entitled, My Earnest Expectation. And we find our text, our main text in Philippians chapter 1, um, verse 20, which reads, According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Just a little small background on the author of Philippians. We know the Apostle Paul was inspired by the Holy Ghost to write Philippians and addressed it to the church of Philippi. Paul and Silas visited Philippi in Greece during his second missionary journey. So it's important for us to know when, where, and how God inspired them who he inspired to give us the words that he gives us, which is life to the believer. Now the word earnest by definition means intense and serious state of mind. Earnest means intense and serious state of mind. Another definition for earnest would be grave, important. So when we say my earnest expectation we're talking about putting our best foot forward. We're not talking about half-stepping or moving slow or being sluggard or procrastinating. We're talking about earnest, putting our best foot forward. Expectation simply means expecting or anticipation. So we're talking about my earnest expectation. So we're putting our best forward with expectation expectation of the manifestation of the promise of Almighty God. So two things I will pose as a question to you, the hearer of this word. 
Number one, what is your earnest expectation? When it comes to the things of God and the things we're believing God for and the things we're living for, you need to have an earnest expectation. What is your earnest expectation? Are you believing God for the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Or are you living this life just, you know, whatever happens, happens. It's already written. No matter what I do, it's not going to affect anything. That's not an earnest expectation. That's not an intense and serious state of mind. Because regardless of who he was prior to coming to the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to understand that God gave us an earnest expectation by way of his spirit. And when we come into the knowledge and wisdom of who he was, is, and is to come, we change the way we think according to Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. We no longer think the way we used to think. So we don't put our hope, faith, and trust in anything but what Almighty God has spoken and said to us. So what is your earnest expectation? And number two, why is it so? We need, to know, we need to know in whom we put our hope, faith, and trust. And just really briefly speaking on it, um, my earnest expectation as a believer is to believe everything that God has said to me in his word. And it's, it is so because I choose to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, the whole one from Genesis to Revelation, I choose, I have a... I have an earnest, intense, and serious state of mind concerning the things that God said. Regardless of what my eyes see, my ears hear, and the things I may experience, my earnest expectation remains in what God told me. Even when things don't look the way they are spoke, what the Word says. Even though circumstances, situations, does not present themselves in a way that, that, that I'll be feeling. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we don't base our faith off of what was seen, but what was said, what God said. So we're going to begin our reading in Philippians chapter 1, and we'll more likely do the whole verse chapter. And let us go. It reads on this wise, Paul and Timothy, the servant of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from our God, from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making request with joy. Verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now, Verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, would never leave us half-baked. He would not never leave us, nor would he ever forsake us. We would never be stuck in the process of being made. Scripture says again in verse 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Going back to our keynote scripture, my earnest expectation. The work that was begun in us was begun through Jesus Christ. Why? Because everything he has done and provided for us is past tense. It's already done. Verse 7, even as it is meet for me, to think this of you all because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my bonds and in my defense, confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. This is the Apostle Paul addressing the Philippians. Verse 8, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Verse 9, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge, and in all judgments, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense to the day of Christ. Verse 11, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory of and praise of God. Verse 12, but I would, ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. 
So the Apostle Paul is explaining that the things that are going on in his present life concerning being in bondage from him appealing to Caesar is for the furtherance of the gospel. He's helping helping people understand, you know, this is everything that you're that I'm experiencing is for the furtherance of the gospel. So his earnest expectation is based off the word that God gave him at the road of Damascus. We need to be mindful of that fact that God had prophesied the things that the Apostle Paul would go through for the sake of the gospel and the furtherance of the gospel. So we see here in Philippians 1, chapter 12, the Apostle Paul is affirming that. Verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and all the other places. So him going through the things he's going through is for the furtherance of the gospel. 14, and many of the brethren in the Lord are waxing confident in my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So he's encouraging and inspiring the brothers to preach the gospel without fear because of what he's allowing himself to go through by submission. Now, he, 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 he fully accepted the responsibility of the call that was placed upon his life when he found out that when, when he was arresting believers and Christians that he wasn't doing God's will. But when he came to the understanding of that Jesus made it clear to him it's hard to kick against the pricks that he had to repent and realize that he wasn't doing what God had created him to do and when he accepted that the Lord let him know what he must need suffer for his name's sake. 15. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill. 16. The one preached Christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the, the, the defense of the gospel. What then, notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therefore will rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So he's explaining, no matter what, Christ is being preached. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Which brings us to chapter 20, verse 20, excuse me, our keynote scripture for this word. According to my earnest and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. That's the attitude we have to have, is that no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what kind of situations, or circumstances we find ourselves in in this world that Christ needs to be magnified. In other words, we're holding on and keeping the faith to the end. According to my earnest expectation and my hope. Verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Once you adapt an attitude of understanding no matter what you go through, what you experience, for to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. You're almost untouchable. You're completely untouchable because you're not allowing yourself to be dictated by the fears of what men can do to you. 22, but if I live to the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. So he's making it clear and understanding you, to us what he feels, that he is in the straight betwixt because he loves being with the brethren, he loves preaching the gospel, he loves sharing the gospel, but he wants to be with Christ, which is far better. 24, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, all for the furtherance and the joy of faith. 26, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by the coming to you again. 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you will stand fast in the spirit with one mind, that you stand fast in the fears with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them that is evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Verse 29, 
For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to, the, to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. So the Apostle Paul is making it clear when he addressing the church of Philippi or in Philippi on the second missionary journey that our earnest expectation, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, which is what the word that I was instructed to give to you. What is your earnest expectation? As we move forward in this year that we're living in now, we need to make sure that, that we have which the Bible calls the mind of Christ. We need to understand our purpose, our reason, and our season here on earth. And that whatever your earnest expectation, now I'm not going to say there's something wrong with wanting a husband or a wife, a house, a car, children, uh, material things, but I'm talking about your earnest expectation. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, we got to make sure that we don't put our hope in anything but Jesus Christ and His righteousness. As the Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all, and all these things will be added unto you. We have to keep God in His proper position in, in order for us to experience and have the things that God has for us. Your earnest expectation. What is your earnest expectation? Is your earnest expectation to do the perfect and complete will of Almighty God? To see souls saved, to see people healed, blessed, and delivered, to see Christ be magnified. He made it clear when he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. So we have to keep our earnest expectation earnest. And although we live in this world, we're not of this world. We need to be mindful of the fact that like the scripture said, that he that begun, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The work has begun. Greater is he that is in you than you that is in this world. The, allow God to complete the work that he started in you so that you can be who he called and created you to be. That will be your earnest expectation. There's an old saying that uh, if you cut me, I will bleed. Just simply meaning that there are things that we will go through and experience in this lifetime, but we can't allow what, our, what we experience to dictate who we are at our core. You know, so often if you make a person mad, their real nature tends to come out. So even as we mature and grow in Jesus Christ, when people make us mad, we should be able to, at some point, bless those that curse us. I know it's hard, and we should be able to love our enemies. And I know it's hard. Lord have mercy. Lord, I know it's hard. But that's the place we're striving for. That's our earnest expectation. I want to be like Jesus Christ. I want to be able to turn the other cheek. I want to be able to pray for those who are trying to cause me harm. Allow your earnest expectation, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, to be in Jesus Christ. This happens through reading the scriptures, praying, fasting, seeking God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity, this platform that you've given us to share your word. We thank and praise you, Father God, that you're not a man or the son of man that you should lie or have need to repent, Father God. Everything you said you were going to do, and that is our earnest expectation, Father God, that we get to experience you and the pardon of our sins. I just pray from the crown of our heads and the soles of our feet, Father God, that you evict and expel anything and everything that's not like you. Father God, any form of unforgiveness, sickness, disease, Father God, teach us to love beyond words and do it in action indeed to give you glory to your name so when they see us, they see you. I thank you for this short word, your anointing, your power, your presence. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. May God continue to bless you and have his face continually and always smile upon you.